I really like this term gene expression. You see it all over the place and it's hard to really understand what it means unless you've learned about transcription and translation and if you understand that DNA is the genetic code and it contains things called genes or little sections of important bits of DNA that actually code for something useful. And that something useful is always a protein and proteins come in many shapes and forms. Pretty much any molecule that does anything important in the body is actually a protein and they come in different forms and they're all coded for it by different sections of DNA. So you've seen, you'll see this through the transcription videos when you're studying translation as well too. But this idea of gene expression just simply means whether or not this gene gets turned on or turned off. So when a gene gets expressed, that means there are a certain set of factors that are in place that will allow that gene, that section of DNA to be actually transcribed. A little copy of that gene is made and it's called the mRNA molecule. And this mRNA molecule will go to some ribosomes and actually be uh, translated and you'll get a little chain of amino acids being built based on reading the instructions that were originally coded for in there. So you do need to make sure you've done your studying on transcription and translation to understand all of this as well too. So what this basic little video just wants to show you is the difference between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. So this diagram here is really representing what's happening in eukaryotic cells. So let's take a look really quick. So from our DNA molecule, we have a specific section right here that my cursor is outlining and we call this part the gene that we are expressing. And in this case, right here, there are some enzymes, uh, RNA polymerase and sp uh, specifically, which is coming here and it's helping us to create a photocopy of the gene. We don't wanna mess with the original gene because it's uh, one of our only copies that's in the nucleus. So we're gonna use a copy of it and it's called mRNA. Now, when this mRNA comes off, we can already just deliver it out to the ribosomes for translation. But in eukaryotic cells, sometimes we have some modification that's happening. So it's called post transcriptional modification. If you know what transcription means, which is making this photocopy, then you know that after we've done transcription, we modify a little bit. So here are these little mini scissors, which are basically special enzymes or restriction endonucleases that are cutting bits of the mRNA out. And we remove parts we don't want, kind of like the intruder parts that are called introns. You're going to see this repeated throughout a few other videos. The introns are removed. The remaining good parts are called the exons and they get spliced together. Splice is a fancy word that means sticking or gluing things together. And then we have our final message that goes out and the final message, the final modified mRNA goes and attaches to different uh, ribosomes and each of these ribosomes will be reading this code and therefore making exact same polypeptides. So each of these little growing clumps so we can tell that this side is almost done and this side has just started growing, but it's gonna, the chain of amino acid that's coming out is starting to fold into a specific two-dimensional and three-dimensional shape depending on what amino acids were actually coded for there. So in prokaryotic cells, this doesn't happen as far as we know. So we don't have any of this modification that's going on. And you can kind of make some inferences about why eukaryotic cells, uh, which are a little bit more complicated with compartmentalization and everything, why they might do this and what kind of benefits this might uh, allow. So we'll be discussing that in future videos as well too. One little cool thing about prokaryotes is that translation can begin pretty much immediately after transcription is done or even before the mRNA is fully produced. Remember that in a prokaryotic cell, there is no nucleus. And so all of this stuff is mixed together. Your DNA is right next to all your, all your ribosomes. So as soon as the mRNA is being made, as it's still being copied, there could be a ribosome attached to it already doing the translation process. So that's kind of cool. So those are some two main differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes in terms of how their genes get expressed or how the processes of transcription and translation can actually happen. So what is this that I threw in here? Oh, just a little quick animation that reminds you when you zoom into a solid nucleus and you see the chromosomes and you, have, and you get down to the gene stuff down here and the actual uh, nature of what these genes are. It's a sequence of bases that are coding for how to make a protein. Every three letters, every three letters here is called a codon 
and each codon codes for an amino acid. So I used a lot of other vocabulary that wasn't mentioned in here, but uh, that's what you should do too. As you're looking at each one of these seemingly separate little videos and separate little topics, you should really be trying to link them together to everything else into a big giant picture. That's the only way you're going to be able to really uh, fully and deeply be able to comprehend all of this stuff in order to apply it to new situations. If not, if you're not thinking big picture, then it's just going to look like a lot of memorization and you will not uh, feel great.